Hello and welcome to a video on 9.5 series. So a series is a sum of a sequence. Okay, there we go. Sum of a sequence. Remember a sequence is a pattern of numbers and to sum means to add up all the terms in that sequence. Often, we use summation notation to denote this. So let's talk about each piece of these things. First, this big symbol we got here, sigma, means to add up. So when you see that, you should think to yourself, okay, I'm going to add up the following things. A sub n is the sequence that we are interested in. So we'll say sequence of interest. How would I define the sequence? And it's going to be in that location. Then we've got a starting point and an end point. Specifically, they're giving us the term number to start with. So in this case, this would be start with term a sub 1 and end on term a sub n. k is known as the index of summation. And it really is just looking at what variable kind of we are using to represent the term number. So together in class, we will do these two examples. If you would like to pause the video and write down these examples, that would be very helpful for yourself. Otherwise, we're going to do one problem together in this video. It looks like this. Calculate the sum. So notice we have the summation notation we just saw, where we are adding together the terms from the first to, in this case, the fifth. They really want us to do a 1 plus a 2 plus a 3, plus a 4, oops, plus a 5. The first five terms from 1 to 5, where each term is defined as follows, n squared. Notice n is the term number. So our first term is 1 squared, our second term is 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, and 5 squared. Uh, if you were to square all those things, add them all up, if you want to pause your video to do that, but I know you're smart enough, uh, we would get 55. That is all this is asking you to do. So while this looks like one of those really complicated things you'd see in like a high school mo movie uh, in a math classroom, it's really just saying add up these terms. Let's talk about a couple other pieces. So there are some formulas that we can use to find certain sums. The sum of a finite arithmetic sequence. All right, let's remind ourselves of these definitions. Finite means it ends, right? It ha excuse me, it does not continue forever. Arithmetic means that we are adding the same thing to each term. And if we consider what this looks like, we are adding up all of the terms from k equals 1 to n, because again, it's finite, right? We have an ending point of whatever a k is, whatever the sequence may be. And as we've said before, this is really the first term plus the second term plus the third term all the way until, in this case, the nth term. But Let's be more specific. If we want to add up a finite arithmetic sequence, we can take the following formula. S sub n, S stands for the sum of n terms, is equal to n divided by 2 times the quantity a1 plus a n. We can go a little more in depth with this if we consider what a sub n actually is. But let's take a moment to just make sure we know what we're talking about in all of these pieces. 
n number of terms. A1, first term. A n, the last term they're asking us for. As I mentioned, we can do more with this formula because we know the general equation for any term in an arithmetic sequence. If you remember, a sub n for an arithmetic sequence is equal to the first term plus n minus 1 times d. This was our explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence. So what if we take this and plug it into our formula for the sum? So the sum of a finite arithmetic sequence is really, I'm still keeping the n divided by 2, I'm still keeping a1, but instead of a sub n, I'm going to add in this little guy. So a1 plus n minus 1 times that common difference. If I do a little bit of algebra here, I distribute my d, I add together these common terms. We're going to do a little bit of simplification. We have n divided by 2 times the quantity. We have two copies of a1 plus d times n minus d. Or you could just write it as n minus 1 times d. It really doesn't matter all that much. I think maybe the more important thing is really just noting that you can add these two terms together. It kind of doesn't matter which you want to use. It really just depends on what you have, what you are given with to begin the problem. The next problem I'm going to put on the screen for a moment, and if you want to write this down, this will be one we do in class together. The corner section of a stadium has six seats along the front row. Each successive row has three more seats than the row preceding it. If the top row has 24 seats, how many seats are in the entire stadium? So pause the video, write that down if you are interested. Otherwise, we have two more formulas. The first is a sum of a finite geometric sequence. All right, finite means it ends. Geometric means we are multiplying. Remember, R is that common ratio. Maybe I can write that better. Common ratio. And the sum of a finite geometric series, excuse me, sequence, is our first term, A1, times the quantity 1 minus r to the nth power, all over 1 minus r, where n again is the last term number in this case, and a1 is the first term in that sequence. As you can see, we have an example that we will do in class together. So again, if you want to pause the video and write that down, that would be great. Otherwise, I got one more formula for you. What about the sum of an infinite geometric series? This is an interesting one because I can actually add up a series that continues forever. That's kind of interesting, right? So let's talk about what this means. A geometric series is known to converge, and we talked about this in class the other day, to converge, con, excuse me, to converge means it comes to one value, all right, so geometric series is known to converge or go to one value if and only if the value of r, specifically the absolute value of r, is less than 1. Okay, so let's consider what this means. We are talking about a geometric series. So we are adding together all the terms from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub 1 times the quantity r to the n minus 1. This is, remember, the explicit formula, explicit formula for a geometric sequence. If this value, if that common ratio, if the absolute value of it is less than 1, 
So another way to put this would be that r is between 1 and negative 1, or that r is a fraction. If this is true, what do we actually have here? Well, we have exponential growth and decay. We can think of it like that. Specifically, if we have exponential decay, think of what that graph looks like. It kind of, well, not kind of, it decays to one value. So that means as x approaches infinity, as the number of terms in the sequence in increase, the sum of these values will converge to one thing. Now, this, if the sequence is exponential growth, if it looks more like this, it's not going to converge to one value. When I add up all these things, I'm going to keep adding, and I will get to something like infinity. And infinity is not one number, so we do not converge. That would be a sequence that diverges. If it converges, if the absolute value of r is less than 1, then the sum is equal to the first term divided by 1 minus r. So again, this is the sum of an infinite geometric series. Sum of an infinite geometric series. And it is only true if the absolute value of r is less than 1. I will show you the next two examples that we'll do in class. If you want to pause the video, actually, I don't think we're going to do this one, but... Uh, you can pause the video and write down these two examples because we will do these in class together. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day.